Small Pond Goose Hunting, William Hovey Smith, 2012. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, but I do some other stuff, too. I'm Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today, we are launching stealth boat here to go down to a small pocket at the end of a mile-long pond and hopefully get some geese. Well, we won't get geese today. What we're going to do is just go down and put the boat in the water. Now, this is not an easy task. Uh, first off, I've got more than a mile of wood roads to keep clear so I can get my truck down. Then, I've got to drag this down to the pond and hack a drag trail through shallow water and pond weeds to get to open water. Then, finally, on open water, I can paddle up to the small pocket where I'm going to set my decoys. But I don't even have any decoys with me today. It's a bluebird day. I don't expect to have geese or ducks within range of blunderbuss. Now, I'm going to try to get a goose with a blunderbuss. And, as a backup gun, I'm also using this Mossberg Model 500 that I've just put a mossy oak camo kit on. So it looks good. Waterproof finish, they say. So we shall actually see how it does actually in the field. So I'm going to be pulling my boat down and putting it in the water. And we're going to get started with all this stuff. This Stealth 1200 is made by Otter Outdoors, who now also make a whole variety of similar molded plastic products, including sleds and smaller and larger boats. Now this one is set up particularly for duck hunters. You'll notice that it has a rack to hold your guns and also a shell shelf to keep your cartridges out of the wet some of the time. There are also compartments front and rear which is sealed and reasonably waterproof to hold other gear. Now this hull is like a catamaran. It has two pontoons on either side and a flat connecting member between. So this is a very stable boat. Now this is a boat that a guy can stand up in and shoot and are bowfish. And I actually use it for both purposes and have. It is also capable of taking a small motor. And these are mounted on a bracket which is on either side, depending on how you like it. And, uh, oh, about two horsepower electric is about right. Or Most commonly, however, I use a paddle. This paddle here happens to be a double-ended kayak-type paddle, and it works very well. Always in this boat, though, <laughs> take an auxiliary paddle uh, from experience. Uh, yeah, those are useful. And paddles are also useful, in my case, for beating down some of this brush when I actually get in the water. Now this is my drag path that you can see dimly down there toward the pond. And uh, believe me, it gets dim indeed uh, by the time we get down close to launch. Uh, here you have the stealth boat in its rather undistinguished looking launching area. You can see water out there! Yeah! I could not find any since September. It's been so dry here in the southeast that this is the first time that the pond is a high enough stage that I can actually launch this boat at this location. And you see the paddle. You see some of the surrounding vegetation. The gun there in its rack. And the rear. And perhaps a bit of the trail that I came down on. Close of view shows the cypress paddle that I use as an auxiliary paddle and this is carved from a single piece of cypress wood and two tools I will be using which are the blackjack kukri knife to the top and also the folding saw from Gerber. Now I'm going to be using this to hack down the pond wheat. Well, you can correctly surmise that I'm standing outside the boat 
and here it is and there is where it came from. Now I'm about halfway out to open water. One thing this dry weather did is the pond vegetation did not grow nearly as luxuriantly as it usually does. So, fortunately, my path to open water from here out is reasonably open. Amazing! Now there is the path looking back from the direction that I came. Now there are some other creatures that help me keep this open. Now I first started this when I was 17 years old. Well I'm now 71 so just reverse the digits. But some other creatures do help. The dark mound that you see in the middle of the photograph is a muskrat mound. So they eat vegetation and help keep this cleared out. Now more effective are beaver who uh, chew up this and there have been some historic beaver lodges. In fact one of them was over there by that cypress tree. And I hunt actually on the top of an old collapsed beaver lodge. We have arrived. Here is my shooting spot on top of the old beaver mound. Now beaver still uses the top of this mound as a place to come and feed. So he pulls up trees and pieces of the roots of these water lilies and chomps on them. And that's what all this debris is on the surface. <laughs> that's Mr. Beaver's work. And this is more what the pond looks like itself. Now usually when I come in, of course, it's pitch black dark. And I would put decoys out here. But not yet, not today. As I say, this is a bluebird day. And not very propitious for duck and goose hunting, although it is windy. And later in the day, who knows? Some geese may come up this way just to get out of the wind. Just letting the current and wind drift us down the channel back to the point where we launched. I'm fortunate that I only have, oh, perhaps a hundred yards or so to go uh, actually paddling because with this wind it's hard, tough enough to uh, paddle against it and I could hardly make headway. We're now looking back on the path towards home. So next time we come this way, we'll bring decoys and perhaps dog and do some serious waterfowl hunting. As well as Bundabas. Yep, he's going to get a try out here. We are hunting in our duck hole. And for once, the plural we I use so often is accurate because I have with me brave Diana Dog. Yes! And she is very interested in the going zone here. She's already been out and explored her environment and got thoroughly wet, as is typical, as labs are wont to do. And what she is seeking is something she does not know. That is a beaver. And what she is unaware of is that beaver are as heavy as she is. They can go 50, 60 pounds. And they fight much better in the water than she. So she dare not take one of these things on, although she doesn't know it yet. But she's been very interested in sniffing around where the beaver has been chewing. And he's been sitting here, and there's a little vent there. And, in fact, he may be lodged here, but I really don't think so. I think this is a feeding station. But she smells plenty of scent. Now, Diana and I have not experienced much in the way of hopeful waterfowl activity today. We came in and had one pair of geese fly as we launched. Diana... <laughs> Did her local explorations, as you saw, and got thoroughly wet. And although it is overcast, the cloud cover is still pretty high. And 
we haven't seen much happen. But we're going to stay here for a while because geese could come in at any time. It was heavy rain last night, so they did get disturbed, and perhaps they're just all sleeping in. The wood ducks flew, well, late, at about 8 o'clock. Now, usually we have woodies fly, you know, right at daylight, so maybe the geese will be similarly delayed. And maybe if we're really lucky, we might even get one close enough. But uh, nothing yet. We're going to sit and see what we can do. We have had events. Yeah. Uh, those two geese that left earlier actually came back. And they came towards me. And we called and they called and we called and they called. And honk, honk, honk. And unfortunately, this pond has two arms. It's shaped like a Y. And they went up the other one. Yeah. But. About when they sat down, another goose, a single, came from this direction. And so he came straight over the top of us, but somewhat high. Well, I took a poke at him, so at least we had a shot. It is 10 a.m. and absolutely nothing is happening, and dog is sacked out. Well, come 11 a.m., almost nothing has changed, except hound dog. She's moved position. And at 12 o'clock, still nothing, and it's time to get out of this place. Well, we are pulled out of the pond now. And, well, we had one shot at a goose. Better that than none at all. At least we tried. And this was one of the better days we've had. Woof. Typically, during the year, I go here maybe eight times, have three shots, and on a good year, get one bird. What? So this is uh, about usual. I am persistent and do have success with my muzzle-loading guns, including this rare double. Now, I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and I also have extreme muzzle-loading as well as crossbow hunting and practical bow fishing. Now, all of these are also available as ebooks. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, and radio show, Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, go to my website, www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.